Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. A few years ago, I posted a discussion video about Parasite and South Korea's history of Oscar submissions going all the way back to the year 2000. And I will include a link to that video in the description box below for you. I always intended to do a similar video covering Japan's history of Oscar submissions and it looks like now is an opportune time because of Drive My Car's popularity. Now this Japanese movie from 2021 has been a big critical hit and has been nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best International Feature Film. Now in this video, we're going to take a look back at the movies that Japan submitted for the Best uh, International Feature Film Award also known as the Best Foreign Language Film Award back in the day. So grab some snacks and a drink because we're going to be here a little while. So every year, Japan chooses one movie to submit for this Best International Feature Film Oscar. Now apparently, the organization that is responsible for making this choice is the Japan Movie Producers Association, also known as the Motion Picture Producers Association of Japan or MPPAJ. Now this is an organization of the major Japanese film production companies which solicits applications from Japanese producers. Now as of 2022, I believe Toho, Toei, Shochiku, and Kadokawa are the film studios that are a part of the MPPAJ. Now when I first read this, red flags went off in my head. I immediately assumed that this would be a problem because, of course, these film studios are going to be biased towards the films that they produced or distributed. And that would be a problem because they would be artificially limiting the movies to be considered for submissions for Oscar consideration. However, when I actually looked at the films that were submitted over the past 20 or so years, there were a good handful of movies that I could not tie back to those four big four film studios. So it appears that they were at least somewhat open-minded in their selection process. But were the movies that they selected any good? We're going to take a look at those in a few minutes. Now historically, and uh, some people are going to fall out of their chairs with what I'm about to tell you, <laughs> okay? Historically, Rashomon, Gate of Hell, and Samurai, The Legend of Musashi received awards from the Academy in 1951, 1954, and 1955, respectively. But those were honorary awards, not competitive. Japan did not officially win the Oscar for Best International Feature Film at any point during the 20th century. <laughs> okay, so they, they did receive some nominations. They got nominations for Harp of Burma from 1956, Immortal Love, 1961, Twin Sisters of Kyoto for 1963, Woman in the Dunes from 1964, Quidon from 1965, Portrait of Chaco, 1967, Dodeska Den, 1971, Sandaken No. 8 from 1975, Kagemusha from 1980, and Muddy River from 1981. Now, those were the nominations during the 20th century. So how does a country get nominated 10 times and win none over the course of like, you know, 40 years or whatever, all right? And that's not even considering the movies that Japan submitted but never got nominated. I mean, stuff like The Ballad of Narayama, Fires on the Plain, Late Autumn, Under the Flag of the Rising Sun, Coup d'etat, Empire of Passion, Antarctica, Rikyu, and the list goes on and on. Now, I thought it was nonsense that South Korea got no love until Parasite came out. This is even worse <laughs> than that. I mean, Japan's submissions had representation from directors like Kon Ichikawa, Keizuke Kinoshita, Yasujiro Ozu, Hiroshi Teshigahara, Masaki Kobayashi, Masahiro Shinoda, Akira Kurosawa, Kinji Fukasaku, Yoshishiga Yoshida, Nagasa Oshima, Hideo Gosha, Koryoshi Kurahara, Shohei Imamura, etc. This is like this is like an elite group of directors here. We're missing some, 
you know, that never really got submitted or, or whatever. But there, this is a pretty solid set of directors from the 20th century. But guess what? They just, you know, they just weren't good enough to win to win this award. They, just, they, couldn't, they couldn't take it past the finish line. It's just not good enough, apparently. And you know what this, what makes this even more of a joke? You know, I've actually watched like a few dozen movies that won the award for Best International Feature Film, uh, most, mostly in the past like 20 to 25 years, and a few before that based on interest. And most of the time, the movies that win aren't that good. <laughs> so it's not like competition is that tough most of the time. This is what you call a travesty, folks, all right? I mean, anyone who's even remotely familiar with Japanese film over the past, like, hundred years should know that this is ridiculous, all right? So there's some ridiculous history for you. But the meat of this video is going to be the discussion from the last 20 years, say 2000 to 2021 or so. More specifically, who won the award for each year, what film Japan selected in its official submission uh, for the year, and whether or not I agree with both of those decisions. So this will be presented in chronological format, as I always like to do. And I think this will be an interesting discussion because it'll give us some trends to look at. What kind of films win the award, uh, which you should know already if you saw my South Korean video. Which countries are typically victorious, stuff like that. And we're going to stress whether or not the MPPAJ has selected the appropriate films for consideration. Now, if I disagree with their submission for a particular year, I'll give my recommendation for a film that I think should have been submitted. So you're going to get some recommendations in this video as well. Now, before we begin, I have a few disclaimers, which I also had in my Korean video. This is my personal opinion on the matter. So when I say such and such a film is better than another film, it's just, it's just my opinion, folks, okay? Very subjective analysis here. Um... Also, I will not be giving, like, complete reviews of these movies as we go through, because that would take forever. But I will briefly discuss them, maybe give a few positives and negatives that I thought of each one. And then, uh, I have researched the eligibility requirements for this award. They're a little bit complicated. There's some nuance, some, uh, you know, uh, exceptions, stuff like that. So, for example, there were some years where the eligibility period is different from the calendar year. So maybe a film was released in November of 2019 in its home country and it's not eligible for the Academy Award for that year because they decided to have the eligibility cut off at uh, September 30th, okay, to give everybody enough time to see the film. So stuff like that uh, is going to be evident here. Another example is that there are certain like television and internet availability requirements that could make a film ineligible based on the timing of those things. There needs to be like certain like cushion periods or something like that. And some of the information is not readily available to me in terms of like, you know, when a film got TV or like internet distribution in its home country. So there's a possibility that some of my personal selections could have been ruled as ineligible. You know what I mean? But uh, keep that in mind. Regardless, it'll be an interesting discussion to have. And I think, you know, most of my recommendations were probably likely eligible. And I will include titles for all this stuff in the description box. All right, let's start here. We're starting in the year 2000. The Oscar for Best International Film, all right, was given to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon from Taiwan. You know, a, a young warrior steals a sword from a famed swordsman and then escapes into a world of romantic adventure with a mysterious man in the frontier of the nation. Very much enjoyed the film. I actually have it in my personal collection. Entertaining stuff with some big name actors, good quality action, and a good story. So I don't have a problem with this movie winning the award. It's a very good movie, and uh, you know, even if you know, even if I haven't seen the other nominees or submissions out there, if a film wins that I think is very good, I usually don't have a problem with it. You know what I mean? It's it's worthy of the title. So the Academy's decision was actually acceptable for 2000. But what did Japan submit, you know, for consideration here? They chose After the Rain, okay? Now, while staying at an inn, a ronin considers taking a job as a fencing instructor for the men of a local lord. And this one, I thought, like, the story, characters, and conflicts were all pretty good. Nothing special, though. You know, kind of basic stuff, kind of a basic story. If you've seen a lot of films in this time period, you've seen a lot of this stuff before. The atmosphere is very good. It's shot very well. 
and uh, good quality movie overall, and the script was written by Akira Kurosawa before he passed away, and that might be the reason why the Japanese submitted it. They were hoping for that name, that the name recognition could get them a nomination or a win, but that did not work. It was not nominated. Now, in my opinion, it might have been a ballsy choice, but I think they should have submitted Eureka, the Shinji Aoyama film. It's a long movie. It's like over three hours long, but it made a big splash on the festival circuit when it first came out. And when I started really getting into Japanese cinema during the mid-2000s, people were still talking about it on message boards. So it was kind of a, it was a big time like a festival flick. And it's got some big name actors like Koji Yakusho and uh, Aoi Miyazaki. So I actually disagree with uh, the Motion Picture Producers Association of Japan, also known as MPPAJ. I disagree with their choice for this year. I would, have, I would have submitted Eureka for consideration. 2001, the Oscar was given to No Man's Land from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Set in 1993, at the time of the heaviest fighting between Bosnia and Herzegovina, two soldiers from opposing sides in the conflict become trapped in No Man's Land. I thought this movie was pretty good. It's a pretty good flick. Maybe a little bit of a contrived setup. Pretty good overall quality, and it does portray the United Nations as somewhat incompetent or useless, which is kind of interesting. But uh, I didn't think it was like a great film, though. Uh, fun fact, the extremely popular French film, Amelie, was also nominated but lost. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that movie, at least the first time I saw it, but I think most people out there would probably have picked Amelie over No Man's Land. Now, what did Japan submit? For this year they submitted go for consideration but it was not nominated it's a good coming of age drama comedy romance hybrid about a japanese born korean guy and uh you get a variety of themes obviously in this film uh japan korean relations that type of stuff and uh there's some good social commentary in this koshi bizaki has a small role in this good overall film and i think it's just as good as no man's land if not better than that film. <clears throat> but I still think that there may have been better options for that year for Japan to submit. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Pulse, the Kiyoshi Kurosawa film, but submitting a horror film, probably unwise. <laughs> I probably would have done it just to make them reject it, but uh, you know, it, it has a strong art house vibe to it, which maybe could have given it a chance, but you know how they are with horror films, guys. They, they just don't respect them. So that would have been a bad choice, but it's just just a thought. Harmful Insect is another early uh, Aoi Miyazaki film. May have gotten some uh, traction, very good flick. Or maybe even All About Lily Shushu may have been a better choice. But kind of difficult to pick between some of these. But I think I would have submitted Harmful Insect because it has that realistic, psychological, coming-of-age aspect. As well as some darker undertones. And I think that's actually on YouTube with subtitles if you want to watch it. 2002, the Oscar was given to Nowhere in Africa from Germany. A Jewish refugee family from Germany moves to and adjusts to the farm life in 1930s Kenya. So the acting in this movie, a little stiff, a little clunky, I thought. Some of the camera zooms and tracking shots and editing were a little bit awkward. Certain parts of the score felt a little bit intrusive, like the narration as well, and a little distracting. From a presentation standpoint, it's kind of flawed. Story and characters, it's fine. It's fine. Not as good as I would expect to win an award like this, though. Japan submitted out for Oscar consideration, but it did not get nominated. I have no idea how I feel about this, because I have never seen this movie. Out from 2002, all right? Uh, looked for it everywhere. Couldn't find it. Uh... I don't think it's available anywhere with English subtitles. You might be able to buy it on, like, expensive Japanese DVD, but I don't know. I uh, I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> the plot follows four down-on-their-luck on housewives who murder their husbands and find wacky ways to hide the bodies. Sounds pretty interesting. But I have read some reviews online, and I don't know, man. Some people gave it some pretty bad... Uh, some pretty bad ratings out there. And I know a few people who actually saw it, like years ago, and they did not like it. So I don't, I'm inclined to believe it's it wasn't worthy of consideration, but since I haven't seen it, I can't make a final determination on that. 
Now, in terms of a movie that I may have submitted, again, I'm a huge fan of Shinji Sukamoto. Not sure if A Snake of June would have would have made it very far, but it's one that came to mind. Uh, if you want one with name recognition, Takeshi Kitano directed Dolls. That may have been a good choice. And there's also a fairly obscure but good film called Blue about a romantic relationship between two schoolgirls. So those are three. And actually, the, uh, Toshiaki Toyota's film, Blue Spring, also came out that year. So there's a few different options here. I might go... I might actually have gone with Dolls, even though it's more of a style over substance film. 2003, the Oscar was given to The Barbarian Invasions from Canada. If you see my Korean video on this topic, you know how I feel about this one. During his final days, a dying man is reunited with old friends, etc. Uh, not particularly impressive film. It's pretty good. It's okay. Felt like it wasn't there wasn't enough content for the main story, so they added a bunch of subplots that don't add much of anything. Too much sex talk dilutes the dialogue. Did not agree with the Academy on this choice. In fact, the Japanese submission is a way better film. It's not even close. That's Twilight Samurai. The first film in director Yoji Yamada's Samurai Trilogy, way better than The Barbarian Invasions. And it did earn a nomination from the Academy. So this was... Twilight Samurai earned a nomination, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Barbarian Invasions, and lost. I... I don't understand that one. <laughs> I mean, Twilight Samurai uh, is pretty fantastic samurai film, impressive character development, recognizable faces... Yeah, I have no words for how it lost to Barbarian Invasions. So if you have not seen Twilight Samurai, definitely check it out. There were a few other options in that year that Japan could have submitted. Maybe Nine Souls or Vibrator, but I think Twilight Samurai was the right choice for submission. 2004, the Oscar was given to The Sea Inside from Spain. The factual story of Spaniard Ramon San Pedro, who fought a 30-year campaign in favor of euthanasia and his own right to die. Very well acted for movie. I really like uh, Javier Bardem. Very good actor. Script writing, kind of simplistic, predictable. I don't know. I feel, the script to me feels like anyone off the street could have written it. Character interaction becomes monotonous after a while. Overall, I'm not like the biggest fan of the movie, even though the acting was good. But uh, I'm sure its themes and message were, were a key to its victory here. Uh, but again, I think the Japanese submission that never got nominated, is a better film. Nobody Knows. Very impressive drama from one of, the one of the most consistent and highly acclaimed directors of the past 20 years, Hirokazu Koreeda. It's about four little kids who are abandoned by their mother and forced to survive in their apartment with limited money and resources. Dramatically powerful film. I think the MPPAJ made a good choice to submit it. It's very worthy. Now, obviously, the fanboy in me would have considered the Shinya Tsukamoto film vital. Not sure how far that would have gone. <laughs> uh, the Hidden Blade is another great samurai flick from Yoji Yamada. But the fact that Twilight Samurai didn't win may have put some breaks on that choice. Tony Takatani would have been an interesting choice. And then there's the very underseen newer classic, University of Laughs, that I hope somebody puts out on Blu-ray at some point. So, overall, though, I think Nobody Knows is a very good choice. 2005, the Oscar was given to Tsotsi from South Africa. This chronicles six days in the violent life of a young Johannesburg gang leader who randomly decides to care for a baby for no reason whatsoever. Not buying this one. Very blunt and clumsy movie, in my opinion. Main guy is underdeveloped, kind of boring to watch played by a lead actor who is very underwhelming in their performance. From the director of X-Men Origins, Wolverine. No joke, same director. <laughs> so of the six winners that we've covered so far, Tsotsi is the least impressive film in my opinion. I just, I was watching this one like a few years ago, and I just, I just shook my head. I'm like, really? This won this award? So obviously the movie that Japan chose to submit for Oscar consideration must have been a better movie, right? Well, in my opinion, I honestly think that the Takeshi Kitano starring film Blood and Bones is pretty much a pile of crap. Uh, I, it's, ugh. <laughs> In 1923, a Korean teenager, played by Kitano, moves from Chechu Island in South Korea to Osaka, Japan. 
Along the years, it becomes cruel and, you know, uh, violent and greedy. This whole movie's strategy is just to be abrasive, obnoxious, and violent the whole time. But it's so poorly written, it has no meaningful depth. There's, like, forced uh, melodrama. The social commentary is just so just shallow. It's repetitive. I remember, um, and the runtime's too long. I remember trying to watch this movie 15 years ago, like in the mid-2000s. Turn the freaking thing off 30 minutes in. It was so bad. But now I'm like, well, I got to research for this freaking YouTube video, so I got to watch it now. So I watched it all, and it's, it's tough to sit through, man. It's not good. So I completely disagree with this submission. And it never got nominated, so... Uh, what I would have submitted, if I was Japan, I would have submitted Bashing. And Bashing is about a woman who was temporarily taken hostage in the Middle East... But she was met with criticism and harassment after she returned home to Japan. Really interesting movie. Really good movie. Um, or I may have chosen the Toshiaki Toyota film Hanging Garden. But I, I think Bashing would have been the uh, was a submission of choice that year for sure. Yeah, so this year no one knew what they were doing. <laughs> Basically is what I'm saying. 2006. The Oscar was given to The Lives of Others from Germany. In 1984, East Berlin, an agent of the secret police conducting surveillance on a writer and his lover finds himself becoming increasingly absorbed in their lives. Now, this is a very well-written film. Performances are top-notch. Premise is, I guess you could say, a little commonplace, but it did not end like I had anticipated. The ending's really good. I think this movie's fantastic. I think it is. If you have not seen The Lives of Others from Germany, I highly recommend it. It's really good. I agree with the Academy on this one. I have no, I have no problems with it. Japan it gave us another head-scratcher submission. They picked Hula Girls to submit for this award. Faced with the uh, impending layoff of a few thousand coal miners, a small and frigid Japanese village decides to open a Hawaiian resort. You know, I mean, it's it's not a bad movie. It just it feels very lightweight for Oscar consideration. You know, it's a pretty good flick. It's entertaining enough. Quaint little dramedy. There's no wow factor to this film at all. Uh, do you know, actually, do you know what Hula Girls feels like? It feels like a Shinobu Yaguchi knockoff movie. You know, like the guy who directed Swing Girls and Wood Job. It feels like a movie that he would have directed, but it was someone else directed it and knocked him off. Or like... Uh, you know, uh, did a carbon copy, and it wasn't as good as those. So if Japan isn't submitting Swing Girls or Woodjob for Oscar consideration, I have no idea why they're submitting Hula Girls for Oscar consideration. So yeah, don't agree with this one. If they wanted, to, like, a bolder submission, they could have gone with the Tetsuya Nakashima film Memories of Matsuko. The movie gets a bit wild, gets a bit wacky, but I prefer that one greatly to Hula Girls. But my choice for this year, what I would have submitted would have been the Miwa Nishikawa film Sway, which is very well-made psychological drama. So, yep, the Academy did good this year. Japan did not. 2007, the Oscar was given to the Counterfeiters from Austria. This is a story of Operation Bernard, the largest counterfeiting operation in history, carried out by a German concentration camp during World War II. Fantastic premise for a movie, the execution's all right. It's all right. There's nothing special about this movie at all. I mean, uh, production values and direction are run-of-the-mill. Uh, performances and character development are decent enough. But uh, I didn't feel anything watching this. There's, there's not a lot of nuance to the character interaction. It's just kind of just like a basic flick that's pretty good. But I expect a lot more from a film that wins an award like this. Again, I think the Japanese submission that never got nominated is a better film. The MPPAJ got back on track with submitting I Just Didn't Do It, which is about a businessman who's falsely accused of groping a schoolgirl on a train and must endure the hardships of an unjust police judicial system in Japan. Very good movie. Very strong social commentary in it. And rewatching this film in 2022 is even more controversial because of the stance it takes on particular topics. So check that one out if you get a chance. It's a good flick. Some other possible choices could have been Adrift in Tokyo, How to Become Myself, 
Don't Laugh at My Romance or United Red Army. But I think I Just Didn't Do It is certainly good enough for uh, submission. They, they did a good, better job this year. In 2008, the Oscar was given to Departures from Japan. There we go. So after the dissolution of an orchestra, a cello player moves back to his hometown and reluctantly begins a career preparing the dead for funerals. So kind of a lively film, interesting premise and great acting, superior character driven film. I like it a lot. The Academy's choice is good here. Took long enough, 40 plus years to finally recognize Japan's film industry for this award. So yeah, the history of Japanese cinema. They finally got a win in 2008. <laughs> For departures. It kind of makes you scratch your head, though, doesn't it? Now, I obviously agree with Japan's submission because it won the award. But there were some other interesting movies that could have been submitted for this year. Love Exposure, that four-hour epic. All Around Us, which is very good. Tokyo Sonata would have been a good choice. And Still Walking would have been a good choice. All very worthy and understandable selections. But Departures was the right choice because it won. So we got to win, folks. We got to win the books. 2009, the Oscar was given to The Secret in Their Eyes from Argentina. A retired legal counselor writes a novel, hoping to find closure for one of his past homicide cases, which still haunts him decades later. Uh, its premise feels kind of generic. Uh, a little cliche. Pacing is a bit slow. But the acting is very good, and there are some effectively dramatic moments during the second half. There are a few good plot turns as well. I like the movie. I think it's a good movie. But there was better stuff out there in 2009. I mean, the Korean submission, Mother, being one example of a superior film that was submitted for competition. Now, Japan submitted Nobody to Watch Over Me for Oscar consideration. This one does a very good job of showing, like, the absurdities of the illogical, reflexive harassment of family members and murder suspects, even if they had nothing to do with the crime themselves. You know, similar in some ways to uh, some of the other films that I've mentioned, where someone will get, you know, harassed for something that they didn't even do, right? Uh, this film, though, is less of an art house film, more of a mainstream dramatic thriller, but I think it's very good. Two other Japanese films from this year that may have been better selections are Gravity's Clowns, which is like a great family drama that touches upon topics like nature versus nurture, or Parade which feels like an homage to Alfred Hitchcock. So I might actually say Gravity Clowns would have probably been the better submission over Nobody to Watch Over Me. But, uh, you know, I'm not that upset about that, I guess. So we're at halftime here. All right, we're at halftime. And let's do a quick tally here. So of the 10 films that won Best International Feature Film, I think uh, three of them are worthy, like really worthy of the award. Three out of ten. Not the best batting average for the Academy, but we got Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Lives of Others, and Departures. Most of the films that Japan submitted were either good or great, with the exception of Blood and Bones, which is just crap. And uh, remember, I have not seen out, but heard mostly unimpressive things about that one. Seems like a decent track record for submitting quality films, but in the majority of cases, I thought there were better more appropriate films that could have been submitted. And, uh, you know, these movies need a little bit of a wow factor, I think. I think they do. Um, and that's lacking in some of their actual submissions. But still, I think five of their submissions were actually better than the movies that won the award. So, Japan did receive two nominations and one victory during the 2000s. So, they did some things right. All right, they did some things right. So, how is this situation going to change, though, in the upcoming decade? So let's find out. 2010. The Oscar was given to a better In a Better World from Denmark. After their sons are bullied at school, the lives of two Danish families cross each other. There's kind of a smoldering intensity beneath the surface in this, uh, surface in this film. Uh, you know, one father is very passive, the other is aggressive. You can understand their perspectives. Very good dialogue, dramatically powerful stuff. I think this movie's awesome. All right, if you have not seen In a Better World, I highly recommend it. Really good. But the movie that Japan submitted, I think is just as good, if not a little bit better. And that's Tetsuya Nakashima's film, Confessions, 
which is an outstanding dramatic thriller. It's one of the best Japanese films of the last 20 years. And uh, I'm going to have to do a review of that one coming up in the next few months. Very psychological film. Really cool. A little bit of a revenge angle in it. So if you have not seen Confessions, definitely watch it. It's a fantastic movie. And Japan did a, a good job picking its submission, even though it never even got nominated. So this is a case where, like, I think the competition was good this year because I, I don't mind in a better world winning this award. I'm perfectly fine with it. And Confessions was a good choice by, by Japan. So it's just one of those years, right? Nobody really screwed up, I don't think. 2011, the Oscar was given to a separation from Iran. An Iranian husband and wife split up over his decision to stay and care for his aging father instead of leaving the country with his family. But his faithful choice to hire a stranger to do most of the caretaking uh, breeds unexpected consequences. So, this movie, fantastic. All right, um, it's just it's a phenomenal film. If you haven't seen *The Separation*, watch it. It's fan, it's uh, amazing. Um, definitely one of the best films to win this award over the past twenty years. A must see. So I have no problems with it winning. Japan decided to submit uh, their worst selection in years with *Postcard*. All right. They didn't even have a they didn't have a chance to win this year with this submission. Uh, it's set during the Second World War. Found to be fairly dull, static, bland presentation, a little bit of overacting, gets a bit hokey at times, characters aren't that interesting. I mean, it was directed by Kaneto Shindo, who made a huge splash with movies like Onibaba and Kuroneko. You could tell this guy was on his last legs when he was directing this film. Why do I say that? Well, I looked it up, because I'm like, this guy directed Onibaba and Kuroneko, and he submitted a film from like... 2011 for Oscar? Like, how old was this guy? And I found out. When he directed this film, he was 98 years old, folks. He directed this film when he was 98 years... Did they prop him up on sticks? All right, to direct this. I mean, I... Are you serious? I mean, what did they... Seriously? I mean, did they just do this as like a... You know, hey, let's just, let's just do this as like an honorary submission for the guy? I don't know. I don't understand it. It's not that good of a movie. And he, he's 98 years old when he's directed it. Did they think that would be the selling point? Here's a film from a 98-year-old director. I don't know. They were on quaaludes when they submitted this film. Um, here's some other options. If Japan wanted to be a little edgy and current, could have gone with the Shion Sono film Himizu, which has direct references to the 2011 uh, Tohoku earthquake tsunami and a few scenes were actually filmed on location okay that would have been an option my official selection what I would have submitted is a little film called Rebirth it's about a mistress who kidnaps her married lover's newborn baby and raises her for four years as her own child awesome movie stars one of my favorite actresses Hiromi Nagasaku way more impactful and impressive than Postcard I'll tell you that so, I, uh, yeah, that, that's enough I'm going to say about that. But we do have two years in a row where the Academy gave this award to a pretty awesome movie. So that's good. 2012, the Oscar was given to Amor from Australia. Or, I'm sorry, Austria. George and Anne are an elderly couple. One day, Anne has a stroke, and the couple's bond of love is severely tested. This is essentially an old person 101 movie. Think about, take the premise, write, write like a five-page script, that's what happens in the movie. And you think about the plot synopsis for 30 seconds, that's all the content you're going to get in the entire film. And it has a runtime of over two full hours. So there's really nothing interesting I got out of this movie at all. Tedious endurance test is how I would describe it. it gives foreign films a bad name. Japan's submission was Our Homeland, which is about a family unit in Japan that's connected to North Korea. Pretty good flick. Pretty good flick. It's certainly better than Amor, but it's kind of slow, a little bit dry. Uh, Sakura Ando is the is one of the leads, which is nice, but again, there's not a lot of wow factor to this. On the other hand, there are at least three other Japanese movies that could have made some waves, in my opinion. The first is the Ryuichi Hiroki film River, which is based on the 2008 Akihabara massacre. Really good movie. 
And then the other two films are The Cowards Who Look to the Sky and the Miwa Nishikawa film Dreams for Sale. I'm not sure which of those three I would have chosen. It's a tough choice. Maybe I would just go with, with Miwa Nishikawa. I would go for Dreams for Sale, maybe. 2013, the Oscar was given to The Great Beauty from Italy. Jeez Louise. It's about an older man who seduced his way through a lavish nightlife in Rome for decades. And then on his 65th birthday, he gets a shock from the past, whatever. Uh, the movie's very nice to look at. You know, I mean, nice for, like, background at a party or something, but the story feels very unfocused, loses the viewer's interest multiple times, character interaction isn't very good. You got two-hour and 21-minute runtime. It's just lacking in too many things to receive an award like this. Japan submitted The Great Passage, about a timid young man who's recruited to create a new dictionary for a publishing company. Sounds boring, but it's actually a pretty, pretty solid movie. Very good cast. You get Ryuhei Matsuda, Aoi Miyazaki, and Joe Odagiri. Solid flick. Certainly better than The Great Beauty, all right? But the movie I would have submitted is Like Father, Like Son, which is one of Hirokazu Koreeda's best movies, and that's saying something. So that's the one I would have gone with. 2014, the Oscar was given to Ida from Poland, or Ida. Uh, a young woman in 1960s Poland is on the verge of becoming a nun when she discovers a dark family secret. I think it's a very well acted film, good quality film. Does meander a bit, a little bit on the dry side, but it's a good movie for sure. But I think the Japanese submission for this year, The Light Shines Only There, is more interesting. Film showcases the low-class pit of grinding poverty that's endured by a small handful of characters. Focuses on a romance between the two. Great performance by the lead actress, Chizuru Ikewaki. And uh, it's a downbeat movie. You, you don't feel the best when you're watching it. But uh, it's a very good quality film. Some other movies to consider would have been, well, The World of Kanako would have been a, probably an unwise choice. Pale Moon had some interesting stuff in it. The Furthest End Awaits, and perhaps the best choice of all, Uzumasa Limelight. Now, I think Uzumasa Limelight may have made some inroads, may have gotten nominated because of its theme of the love of filmmaking. And sometimes the Academy gets, they get a little uh, hot and bothered with the love of filmmaking type of uh, premise for movies. So I think I might have done Uzumasa Limelight. 2015, the Oscar was given to Son of Saul from Hungary. A Jewish-Hungarian concentration camp prisoner sets out to give a child he mistook for his son a proper burial. Opening scene, very nicely shot, dramatically impactful. But the camera work in this movie is obnoxiously repetitive. Like, you see the protagonist's head and shoulders take up at least 50% of the screen for most of the runtime. It's so annoying to watch. And there's, I mean, there is enough conflict to keep you going as a viewer, but this is not nearly as good as I was expecting. I mean, just the choice of the framing and, and just, uh, it just, uh, too repetitive, way too repetitive. And again, I enjoyed the Japanese submission, 100 yen love, more than this. You have a lazy antisocial woman in her early 30s becomes interested in an amateur, uh, <clears throat> in amateur boxing. And very good flick. Sakura Ando is great in it, so I prefer the Japanese submission. One of my favorite Japanese films of the 2010s was also released this year, and that was Our Little Sister from Hirokazu Koreeda. Love that movie. Probably the one that I would have submitted. I'm a big Koreeda fan, as you can tell. Now, in 2016, the Oscar was given to The Salesman from Iran. While both participating in a production of Death of a Salesman, a teacher's wife is assaulted in her new home, but they ponder if reporting it to the police is even worth the additional struggle. Very well-made film, maybe a little basic in its characters and story, and this is from the same director who did A Separation. Not quite as riveting as that movie, but it's a good quality flick. Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure of the Academy's decision, but I think that The Salesman is a few levels higher in quality when compared to some of the other films that typically win this award. So, you, I'm on the fence on giving the Academy a pass for this one. 
Now, Japan submitted the Yoji Yamada movie Nagas Nagasaki Memories of My Son, set in post-World War II Japan. Um, it's about a, a midwife who sees an apparition and uh, talk, uh, basically reminisces about certain things that happened during the war and stuff. Not one of Yamada's best, in my opinion. It's watchable. It's nothing special. Um, I just watched this movie like a few weeks ago. I can tell like in a month or two I'm going to forget about most of it. So that's not a good thing. If Japan wanted to go edgy, they could have submitted the sang Il Lee film Rage. Which is very intense, but very high quality. I have a review of that one. Uh, a bunch of these movies I have reviews on, actually. Traces of Sin would have been a good choice. And The Long Excuse was great also. Basically anything from Miwa Nishikawa, <laughs> I would submit. Uh, her and Kurt Aida. And The Long Excuse stars the same actor, who is the lead in Departures, Masahiro Motoki. So you have that connection. Um, but if I had to choose... I might go with Rage, because that one is special. <laughs> but I don't know, it's it's pretty disturbing. It can get disturbing at times. 2017. The Oscar was given to a fantastic woman from Chile. Marina, a transgender woman who works as a waitress at Moonlights as a nightclub singer, is bowled over by the accidental death of her older boyfriend. Pretty good flick. Kind of suffers from a one-dimensional conflict. I don't know, it does... It, it's like, uh, th there was a Japanese movie that came out a few years ago called Close Knit, which depicted, like, the straight mother as wholly incompetent, while the transgender person who could be the mother was perfectly motherly in every way humanly imaginable. Like, it was very, like, like uh, uh, one note in each direction. You know what I mean? And uh, a fantastic woman does suffer a little bit from that. Uh, but I found the character interaction to be a little bit more realistic in this case, which made it a moderately enjoying affair. But, I don't know, I wasn't wholly convinced that this one should have won. And it's nowhere near as good as a taxi driver from South Korea, you know, which was their submission. Uh, not even close, alright? It's also not as good as Japan's submission, Her Love Boils Bathwater. And it's about, like, a fragmented family unit. Terrific performances, some great dialogue. I don't blame Japan for submitting it. It was a good choice. There were a few other options for submissions this year. Birds Without Names, The Limit of Sleeping Beauty, or Hanagatami. But uh, Her Love Boils Bathwater was definitely uh, a good submission. 2018, the Oscar was given to Roma from Mexico. And this depicts the year in the life of a middle-class family's maid in Mexico City in the early 1970s. In terms of production values and technical aspects... Very impressive film. I really like how this one was shot. Camera work and direction are like A-class tier. The, uh, the story and characters were good. So there was kind of a, you know, you have the technical aspects were really awesome. The story and character aspects were good, but not as awesome. So it brings the film down a notch, I think. A quality movie. I liked it. I think the Japanese submission, Shoplifters, is a better movie. One of the uh, Koreeda's best movies as well. And that's saying something. And it did get a nomination, so it was close to winning. So this was a you know a fairly competitive year with South Korea's Burning making some waves as well. But I do think Shoplifters is the best of these movies that I've seen from, from this particular year. All right. And I think it was the right choice to, to make from Japan. 2019. Oscar was given to Parasite from South Korea. You know, we, we know what that movie's about <laughs> by now. The Academy made a good choice. It's a very good movie. Japan submitted an anime film. Weathering with You. Directed by Makoto Shinkai. Very nicely animated. Story and characters are pretty good. It's pretty good. Kind of a curious choice, though. Uh, first of all, there were many better anime films from the 21st century that should have been submitted before this. If you're going to submit one, like Spirited Away. And they did try to submit a few anime films in the 90s with no success for nominations, like Pompoko and Princess Mononoke. But I guess they decided to try again now, in 2019. Of all the great anime films to choose from over the years, and they choose Weathering With You. Again, I, I shake my head sometimes. I would have chosen Contora, 
37 seconds or to the ends of the earth. Now, if I forced to choose, I would say Contora would have been my choice. Great film. Check out my Japan Cuts rundown from 2020 for my thoughts on this. Quite possibly my favorite movie of that festival. It's fantastic. Now, even though the festival was 2020, Contora was a 2019 film, I believe. Now, we go to 2020, and the Oscar was given to another round from Denmark. Four high school teachers consume alcohol on a daily basis to see how it affects their social and professional lives. Really good movie. I love me some Mads Mikkelsen. Dude's a fantastic actor. I have no problem with this winning. It's a really good flick. Japan submitted True Mothers, which is also a very good movie. After a long and unsuccessful struggle to get pregnant, Satoko, played by Hiromi Nagasaku, and her husband adopt a baby, but a girl claiming to be the child's mother disrupts their lives. I need to do a review of this one in the near future. Strongly recommend it. Very good choice by Japan. It was a competitive year. Another Round is a really good movie. Another movie I may have considered would have been Voices in the Wind, which is dramatically heavy but pretty excellent. Probably my second favorite movie that I saw at Japan Cuts from 2020. Uh, Check out my rundown video for a review of that. But again, this year, can't really blame either the Academy or Japan. They both picked very good movies. 2021. As of the date of this video, all right? The Academy Awards have not yet occurred. So remember, this is uh, celebrating 2021 in film. So the awards are in 2022. So since we don't know who's going to win yet, I took it upon myself to watch all five movies that were nominated for Best International Feature Film. We have Flea from Denmark. It's an animated movie. It's about an Afghani man who is on the verge of gay marriage, and that compels him to reveal a hidden past. Animation quality is kind of poor in this. I assume it had to be really low budget. Um, There is some live action footage mixed in. There is some cross-cultural social commentary here, but it's presented very dryly. It's just a very dry movie. Uh, it's There's no, like, ebbs and flows of, like, climaxes. Or, it's just, like, real bland the whole way through. Uh, I did not like it. I didn't. It, feels, it felt like homework watching it. The Hand of God from Italy is the second film nominated. In 1980s Naples, young Fabietto pursues his love for football as family tragedy strikes. This one has kind of annoying humor, and the opening 30 minutes is essentially our young boy protagonist gawking at old, ugly, naked women. (laughs) So, I don't get what this guy's fetishes were. Uh, The rest of the movie is just shallow, vapid nothingness. It's obnoxious, it's boring, difficult to care about anything that happens, From the same director who gave us the great beauty. So it's no surprise that it's underwhelming, folks. I don't understand how this guy keeps getting nominations. Does he know someone? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. The third film is Lunana, a yak in the classroom from Bhutan. School teacher in his final year of training has been sent to a remote town. um, And he must brave the high altitude and a lack of amenities while he teaches some kids. Now this one's a pretty good flick. Get some beautiful natural environments, slow paced and kind of light on content, not very deep, but the interactions between the characters are nice. You know, it's a movie that has its heart in the right place. I liked it. I don't think it should win, though. Fourth nomination is The Worst Person in the World from Norway. The chronicles, uh, it chronicles four years in the life of Julie, a young woman who navigates the troubled waters of her love life and struggles to find her career path. This, this is very solid performances, has some oddball moments that are memorable. Random narration at points feels useless to me. They should have just forgotten the narration entirely. Like, I don't know why they put it in there at all. Uh, there's a lack of interest in the protagonist's career desires, which I thought was going to be a focus at some point. And the final half hour of the film does drag a little bit. It gets kind of, I don't know, cliche in the final half hour. I, f- I wish they would have just kept going with what they were doing in the opening you know, hour and a half. But it is a quality flick. It's a good flick. If any movie is going to upset drive my car for the win, my guess is it'll be this one. I liked it. And then we have Drive My Car, which is the big one. Uh, I have a review of it on my channel. 
and uh, one of the most highly acclaimed Japanese films of all time, if you count Academy Award consideration. Of all the great films that Japan has produced over the last century, this is the one that broke barriers. <laughs> kind of strange, but it's a very good movie. Check out my review. I had some problems with it, but I think it's the best film of these nominees. I do. Uh, I think it should win, and it's, it is the favorite at this point, I think. So we're up to date, so let's do a quick summary here. In my video on Korea's history of Oscar submissions, I already covered my thoughts on a variety of topics regarding the Academy Awards, like the countries that typically win this award, the methodology of voting, the process of promoting the movie, my thoughts on the award show itself, as well as any potential biases that exist. I also discuss uh, whether films that are nominated for Best International Feature Film should be eligible to win other categories, like Best Director and stuff. So I won't, uh, I won't repeat all that discussion here, I'll just be repeating myself, but I'll, I'll include a link to that discussion in the description box, as I said. Now, of the 21 films that won Best International Feature Film since 2000, I think 8 of them are worthy of that award. It's like 8 out of 21, okay? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The Lives of Others, Departures, In a Better World, A Separation, Parasite, Another Round, am I missing one? And The Salesman, I think, I, I, if I, you know, force myself to choose on that one. So films of this quality and better are what I expect when the Academy claims it to, the, to be Best International Feature Film. If all of the winners were this good, I don't think many people would be complaining uh, from Japan or Korea in, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, their lack of representation or whatever, if they're complaining about that. But it's not the case here. Of the 13 winners... Uh, the other 13 winners, so 8 out of 21 I'm good with. The other 13, far less impressive. And, uh, you know, it's it's just the way I feel about it. <laughs> Most of the time, like 2 out of 3 times, I think the film is just overrated. If I were to summarize this topic in relation to Japan cinema, though, I would say at least 10 of those remaining 13 films that won Best International Feature Film were not even as good as the films that were submitted by Japan for consideration. So, I think overall the, the MPPAJ or whatever has done a, a decent job, probably a better job than the Korean Film Council, at least in terms of getting results over the last 20 years. I mean, Japan has gotten four nominations and at least one victory with Departures, probably two with Drive My Car if it wins. And that's better than Korea's meager one nomination and victory for Parasite, right? Oh, by the way, France got eight nominations during the last uh, 20 plus years. Uh, they're kind of an outlier, and they actually didn't win any of those nominations. They haven't won this award since 1992, which was kind of interesting when I looked that up. So Japan's doing all right. Japan's doing all right, and Korea's starting to pick up steam here. But I think Parasite likely made a bigger international impact than uh, Japan's recent Oscar noms and wins, because it, its wins in the additional categories were like with Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Original Screenplay kind of really took it to the next level, where like everybody was talking about it. I don't think... Something about Drive My Car, I don't think everybody's going to be talking about this. It's getting a lot of attention, but uh, a lot of it is just like film fan type uh, type people, you know? I would be surprised if it swept all four of its nominations. I don't think that's going to happen, but you never know. And I'm the first to tell people that the Academy Awards mean nothing in terms of objective film quality, but, you know, our brief analysis of the Best International Feature Film uh, Award is filled with situations where lesser films won over clearly better films that were either passed over for a nomination or excluded from submission entirely. But I am happy to see Drive My Car get nominated because it's important to the filmmakers in the industry, and it could draw additional attention to uh, Japanese cinema. But the industry needs to be ready for that attention. In the past, I have criticized, fairly regularly, the hard-headedness of the international distribution in relation to Japanese movies, especially contemporary movies from the 21st century. I mean, in some cases, Japan just flat-out refuses to promote its films internationally. Um... And, uh, like, for example, they consistently refuse to subtitle their movies when they release them, on physical media especially. 
You know, and the subtitles already exist from the festival circuit. Just take the subtitles and throw it on the freaking Blu-ray. It can't cost that much money, dude. Because there's that aspect that, like, denies people the ability to enjoy their films internationally. And then you have other stuff where, you know, recently I've been hearing all kinds of things about how, you know, the, the people that own the rights to these films in Japan are just demanding ridiculous amounts of compensation for international distribution. I mean, they're asking for so much money. Like, if I wanted to distribute, uh, I don't know, a, a favorite director in Japan's films, like, you know what, I'm going to distribute them myself. So I'll, uh, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay for the rights and I'll distribute them over here. I'll make my own Blu-rays and everything. Apparently, they're asking for so much freaking money that no one wants to distribute, like, a lot of their movies. Like, I don't think that's how it's supposed to work, guys. Like, you take as much as you can get, but eventually you got to take something. Otherwise, your movie doesn't go anywhere internationally. And I talk about this in my Where Did All the Japanese Horror Movies Go or whatever video. But that that really annoys me. It, it, it It's just so, like, it just feels pretentious. Like, your movie's only worth as much as people are willing to pay for it. <sighs> but anyway, um, kind of a backwards mentality over there sometimes, I think. Kind of a stupid strategy. Your movies never even get out there. You know what I mean? But in any case, there's still have been a, you know, if you look at the number of Japanese films that have been released, like in the U.S., it's a pretty, it's a pretty big amount. Just imagine how many there would be if they actually put more effort into promoting their industry. So, but will Drive My Car increase interest in Japanese cinema? Maybe a little bit. I mean, anime and manga keep making strides internationally, but it feels like their live-action cinema from Japan, it just never gets the credit it deserves. This is especially true for, like, newer movies. And I kind of expect that trend to continue, unfortunately. But, hey, if Drive My Car can help this situation a little bit, it's a good thing. So hopefully this video was at least somewhat interesting to you. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Do you think it's, it's fine that Japan received no wins before departures in 2008? How many Oscars do you think oh, excuse me? How many Oscars do you think Drive My Car will win? And do you agree that the Motion Picture Producers Association of Japan submitted the correct films for each year? And uh, yeah, if you disagree with them, what films do you think they should have submitted? All these things are, are good discussion points, people. So I think overall it's a good solid discussion of Japan's history of Oscar submissions. Again, if you're behind on your your live action Japanese movies, just get on them. You know, I have a whole playlist of Japanese movie reviews for you. If you want to watch some good ones that fly under the radar. And as always, we will see you next time.